Platt, and today we try one hell of a beer. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So today our uh, particular beer is uh, from Steigl. It's the Steigl Hell, or a Helles Lager. Um, Steigl uh, has been around so long that there's actually no real date the brewery started we don't there's no recorded history of when it started it's that old the first actual mention of the brewery came june 16th 1492 yes that same 1492 that columbus sailed to the new world uh, about this time uh, it's being mentioned people still thought the earth was flat uh, just a little context um the uh originally the brewery was known as das brewhaus in in all uh, Gestatten, uh, bar, bar my announcement. Marketing eventually shortened that up. Uh, the location is in Salzburg, Austria. At the time, it was part of the Holy Roman Empire. We're still we were still referring to the Roman Empire back then. That again, uh, amazing how long ago that was. Uh, the term Steig, uh, where the name come from, it was reference to uh, small steps. There was a small set of steps that went up to the brewery and. That's, the, that's what, where the name came from. Uh, interesting story about the brewing water. Uh, apparently, they're in the heart of town. They didn't have a well or water, so there was a, a municipal water source, something called the M Canal, and they would send people to fetch water. And that, there in Salzburg, was the oldest municipal water source or water system in Central Europe. Again, predating the brewery. Just really historical stuff there. In uh, 1650, they had become Salzburg's largest brewery by then. They uh, produced on a one hectoliter brew system, and even for back then, were able to produce 100,000 liters a year. Pretty impressive for, you know, as simple as technology was back then. Uh, move ahead to 1780, and uh, in a letter from Mozart's sister, she discusses how Mozart loves going to the brewery, having a pint or two, and playing a game called Skittles, which is a classical pub game, where we got the name Skittles for the candy, interestingly enough. Uh, in 1820, they purchased a uh, beer cellar inside a mountain, uh, outside a town, a little like cave, that was a classic way to lager beers back then. And they ended up building a little beer garden outside the entrance. You know, think about it, a sunny afternoon, go take a hike up the mountain and have a pint or two. Sounds, sounds beautiful. In uh, 1863, they decided uh, it was time to expand, time to grow uh, in the heart of the city, just not enough space. So they moved out to an area called Max Glen. Basically, they moved out to the burbs to uh, expand. Unfortunately for them, in 1875, a fire destroyed the brewery and had to kind of scramble for production. Uh, but they still ended up producing 20,000 hectoliters that year, so pretty impressive to scramble like that. Move ahead to 1912, and they registered the brand Steigl Goldbrow, and they released that beer uh, the same year, and that became their flagship beer that we know of today. Uh, one interesting fact, uh, in 1914, around that time, the brewing business, specifically in Austria, and really specifically in Salzburg, was really blowing up. At the time, beer consumption per capita in Salzburg was 200 liters per year. The rest of Austria was 100 per year. We'll get into that a little bit later, but I found that quite uh, interesting. Lastly, in 2005, they move into a modern brew house. They come into the 21st century, you know, massive uh, capacity, what have you. But they still brewed under the beer purity laws of 1516. Now, a lot of times we refer to it as the German beer purity laws. But remember, back, you know, back as far you know, as the 14, 1500s, Germany, Austria, Czechoslovakia, that was kind of all in one. So they kind of shared the common beer culture. Real quick, let's talk about some of their other brews. Uh, first is Steigl Goldbrow, 5% ABV, the classic European golden lager. Uh, they refer to this beer as liquid gold. I think marketing ought to stick with that. And next we have something very interesting that I had to do a double take. They produce something called Sports Weiss, a non-alcoholic low-cal brew that they refer to as an isotonic sports drink. So next time, throw out the Gatorade, get you a Sports Weiss. All four. Uh, next they have a beer called Christ Kindle. 
5.7% ABV. This is a Honey Amber Ale that's part of their craft series. Um, recently, I've noticed some of the older breweries in Europe who've been producing beers for hundreds of years and again work kind of under the beer purity laws have ended up developing a craft line just, I guess, to kind of keep up with the, what the kids want to drink these days. Uh, lastly, it's a beer called Sun and Chronic, uh, 12% ABV. This is a Weizen Doppelbach that is barrel aged. Yes, yes, and yes. Now, I would be interested to know what kind of barrels they use, if they're using ex-bourbon barrels, wine barrels, what have you, but yes, give me that. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today, before we try this beer, I thought we'd talk about the per capita consu beer consumption. You know, they were talking about 200 liters per year, so I thought I'd kind of compare it to some modern day numbers. I found an article that kind of quotes 2020 numbers, uh, and this obviously referring to 2019. This article came out in 2020, but anyway, uh, per capita numbers on the major countries around the world. Uh, number one on the list was Czechoslovakia at 140 liters per capita. So not too far behind what Salzburg was doing. Uh, Austria came in at 107 liters per capita, and then Germany 99. And a lot of people would figure those would probably be the top names. Some people might think Germany would be number one, but again, all fairly uh, similar range. U.S. came in at 73 liters per person, and I actually find that pretty good considering all the different stuff you can drink here, you know, all the options you got. 73 liters still quite respectable. Uh, Mexico came in at 70.5 70, 70 liters per capita, and UK came in right behind it at 70. I would have lost a lot of money if you had told me that the UK would have been behind Mexico. Just because of tequila, they also produce quite a bit of rum down there. You know, they, they have other options, you know, and I was just kind of surprised by that, you know, especially if you think about the classic British pub, they drink beer. Um, a little lower on the list is France at 33 liters wine i get it and same for their neighbor italy at 31 liters per person wine I, I totally get it uh at the bottom was india at two liters per person i do know they uh a, a lot of the clientele i used to work with on, on the strip from india were, were more scotch or blended whiskey drinkers so i kind of get that well with that being said let's drink one hell of a beer Nice white foam, real thick, plenty of bubbles. Oh, that is crystal clear, light. Um, let's go for the nose. A little bit of malt, that is about it. Not much uh, else to the nose. Let's dive in. And that's pretty good. Um, get a little bit of malt. You get just a shade of hops on the back end, not a lot. Um, lighter body, real easy drinking. I do pick up just a slight bit of that Euro funkiness, but it's real mellow water. Just kind of like, but it does kind of remind. All right, we're in Europe. We're in Europe. You know, it's not something they're doing. You know, in Canada or you know Japan or whatever. We're in Europe. Uh, but it, but it's not abrasive or over the top. Um, man, it's just a nice clean lager. It's a nice clean lager. Um, it it does have something more to it than a generic adjunct lager. Um, again, I can see taking a hike up to the mountain <laughs> beer cellar for this one. Uh, just a well-executed beer, classic of the kind of German, Czech, Austrian beer period law, 15, 16. We got just a few ingredients, but we're going to do it really well. And uh, that is what this is. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bombs up.